under, under the scope. Hey, Scopers. Jared and Shane. Hi. And Carrie. And we're back with another edition of the Scope Fall Film Flam. Carrie's hiding. I am. She's back there. <laughs> She's right back there. Uh, today we are bringing you uh, the science fiction thriller <laughs> About Time. From about the, It's About Time we did From About the, Time. From the creator of Four Weddings and a Funeral. Yeah. We're going in order. What next? Uh, Notting Hill. Notting Hill. Love Actually. Love Actually. And Machete, the original. <laughs> yeah. You, did, you didn't know it was a rom-com from, uh, from the UK, did What's you? What's his name? Something Who? Curtis? I don't know. The director. Sure, that guy. Look him up. IMDb is your friend. I just, Look it up on your phone, Carrie. This one I didn't take note of. I'm sorry I failed you, YouTube audience. Who does it star, Jared? Uh, it stars Rupert Grint. It stars uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Right, I'm assuming. All the British. Oh wait, these are stars of Harry Potter. Yeah. I get it wrong. There's one American. <laughs> uh, the only names I remember are Bill Nye and uh, Rachel McAdams. Yeah, and the the lead his name is like Donham. There's a bunch of gingers. Donham Gleeson. Curtis. Yep, sounds like a ginger. What's it? It's like Donham Gleeson. Find it. Sounds Come like on. a ginger. Donham Gleeson. Donham yep. Gleeson. Definitely a ginger. So uh, I say. Dom Dom no. <laughs> Boy, we are I, just going over a cliff here. God, my head is so white right now and shiny. Oh, um, relax. Uh, so we Jared, can't spring for makeup. Yes. This movie, yes. it is actually a science fiction film. There is a fi science fiction. You wouldn't think that that would be the sort of stuff that this, uh, this filmmaker would normally cover if you're familiar with yeah. his oeuvre. Uh, <laughs> it's sort of like uh, uh, the Gwyneth Paltrow movie, Sliding Doors. I never saw that one. Mm, sort of. Well, I mean, in a sense, isn't that a British movie as well, Carrie? She know. plays a Brit. And it's about shifting through time. You're not going to hear anything she says. So, <laughs> so the uh, we got into this film. Let's, let's yeah. backtrack a little bit. Okay. We, we made a, a new friend. That's we made a new friend thing. named uh, Ruben. Ruben. Uh, this movie uh, had a special entry fee, which was you had to have a special card, that like a membership card. That uh, uh, it was a Freemason card, right? You had to be a Mason. <laughs> yes. It was part of the Illuminati. Okay. Fair enough. Um, and, uh, AMC Stubbs, I believe. Ruben got his entrance from Jay Z. <laughs> Jay Z vouched for him. You gotta know someone. <laughs> I'm working. I'm working on Kanye. He's he's not ready to no. step up for me yet. So, uh, what's the name of uh, Jay Z's daughter, Carrie? Uh, Blue Ivy. Mm -hmm. Blue Ivy. Mm -hmm. That was the secret password to get into this film. <laughs> wow, we are just you're just making stuff up. Ruben uh, Ruben allowed us to use his card to get into this film. He what? was a very nice guy. We found out that Ruben actually uh, is a old hat. He's an old pro at this. He goes to all these movies. He sees about four or five a week, I guess. Only on the weekdays, weekends. He doesn't have to worry about it. Well, he's out clubbing. And uh, maybe he will even listen to this podcast. But he might be our connection to every movie we ever want to see. Did you actually tell him we had a podcast? Yes, I, I, I emailed it to him. Oh, my. And he's ready to go. So I almost invited him. I'm doing my Neil deGrasse Tyson hands. I almost invited him to see it. We got a badass. I almost invited, invited him in on this his interview slash review. Been, mm. But guess what? He was out. So the movie was over. Yep. Boof, gone. He was Pro gone. Probably we off. We got a robot car starting up in front of probably us. Probably off to the next one. <laughs> this is a lady. So anyway. Uh, Let's try to talk about the movie. The movie is actually a science fiction thriller, Jared. <laughs> yes. Um, so it pretty much tells the story of one man who uh, finds out at the age of 21 that he can go back in time at any yes. at any point. Apparently, this is a family secret from yep. the male side. He learns it from his father, played yep. by Bill Nye, and who learned it from his father's yes, father. Passes it on. All you have to do is go into a dark room. Yeah. Close your eyes. Think about the moment where you want to go back in your own. Clench your fists and boom, off you go. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the st that's pretty much the story, and it tells his story pretty much from the age of twenty one. Yep. Uh, until. Not 21, I don't know. Probably, I, I probably say he's late, late so. 20. How old is maybe his daughter? 30? Maybe th maybe he's 30 yeah. by the end of it. I don't know. Um, yeah, he uh, it, it sort of kicks off with him. It's very weird you doing the recap, but oh, I, yes, I'm, I'm no no no. Please. Go ahead. I've done a, I've done a lot well, of recaps. You lately. didn't know the director. You didn't know the <laughs> actors. You thought we were watching this eighth Harry Potter movie oh, goodness. again. Well, this is crazy. Podcast ever. Yep, wow. pretty much. And too bad it's a video cast. Thumbs down on YouTube. I hate these guys. <laughs> so it tells the story of Tim. That's his name. Tim, yes. Uh, he, and he meets Mary, who reminds by, of his mother. Yeah, played by Rachel McAdams. And it tells it's their story. Yes. And uh, he will flash through time, uh, righting the wrongs of of uh, events that happen with it, Mary as much as he can. As much as he can. Um, it's you can't go back and kill Hitler. That's established. The th here, I mean, everyone knows that. Here's the thing about this about. Um, this type of movie. Yes. Is that there is a 
there is a, I don't want to say a saccharine sweet quality, but there is definitely a rose colored glasses, rose tinted glasses aspect. I think aspect you can go these. with saccharine sweet quality. Um, it's very, just like uh, any of these other movies we've seen uh, by this director, who? Richard Curtis. Richard Curtis. There we go. Staff's um, working back there. It is. Thank they, you, intern. They are crafted <laughs> to pull at the heartstrings, tug at the heartstrings, if you will. Well, you get quiet when people walk by. You're like, I don't know. Yeah, they can't hear me. Can. Um, <laughs> Who cares? So there's a bit of manipulation going on. You think so? Throughout this entire film. Mm -hmm. No, you're losing me. <laughs> you didn't want to have any part of this. Yeah, shut your <laughs> yeah. You're going to make me mad. Um, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying it's a fault of the film. I'm saying that is how Mr. Curtis does his, uh, does yes. his films. I mean, that's a, that's a, a, a device that he has used time it's and a, time again, it's and it's been successful for It's him. a deliberate style of filmmaking. Yes. And it doesn't mean it's bad yeah. or good, necessarily. It depends on your opinion. Yeah. Each person's going to respond differently. I mean, over through Tim's life, uh, things go pretty well for him overall. And I don't know if that's, if that's just a factor of him having this time travel technology, this time travel power. Yeah. But I mean his life is pretty seems like a pretty great place to be. Yeah. But and you I'm know and, bothered and, that, by it. and that's and that's <laughs> and that sort of is a, a, a prominent feature of any of the main characters you'd see in a Richard Curtis film. Sure. You know, everyone has sort of this idealized life, you know, uh, Hugh Grant meeting the movie star and falling madly in love. That's not true, though. Not always, but not da, 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 interns are paid to sit there and look up information. Listen. Yes, intern. <laughs> So, um, people it, get cheated on uh, in love, actually. So, it is, yes, absolutely. But, well, not in this one. This one went about as perfectly as it could. I know. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah. So, so there's a, a couple of nifty time travel uh, twists in this film or, or rules that are established. Right. Um, that I think you're sort of waiting for something like, okay, where, when, when's the deal going to turn bad? Or, or, I was waiting for the pivot. And there was a pivot. I mean, there, yeah. as much as this movie could have. Yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't. I guess maybe what I was hoping for isn't what this movie is about. You so. Someone to die for it. No, 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 I just. Yeah, what okay. did you want in this movie, Jared? I felt like. I felt like there weren't really significant consequences to the time travel. Sure. Um, at least none that couldn't be easily. Uh, you know, let's do a redo and yeah. fix whatever went they, wrong. Have to be? They play. No, I guess not. But I was kind of hoping there would be. I felt like okay. I felt like there's there's a wedding. Obviously, there's a wedding scene, and uh, the weather gets really really bad. It's torrential rain. Things yeah. are blowing, and I really felt like this might have been the moment where the film was going to pivot and start to show us some of the negativity to the time travel. Sure. And it really doesn't. It doesn't. It show just you sort that. of just. It's just yeah. bad weather. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, uh, things will change, and it just, they don't really explain how he gets back or, you know, what the, how your mind changes if you change something in the deep past. It plays fairly loose with it, and it, it so it's less science fiction-y and more dramatic yeah. perhaps. My, I think my biggest problem with the film is it tries to paint this, this portrait of, you know, this nice... Nice, normal, but perfect life, you know, where you just kind of relish every moment and yeah. you kind of pay attention to the simple things. But the whole time I'm feeling like Tim didn't earn this. Like Tim, I felt like Tim got too many redos. Tim could go back and fix all of his misstarts. Um, if he said the wrong thing to the wrong person at the wrong time, he could just go back and do it again sure. and fix it. And so I feel like he got the girl, he got the perfect life, he got the kids... And he, you know, he had so many chances to just do it right and get what he wanted. And it Those just... people don't do that in life. They screw up. I know. That's why it feels so unfair. <laughs> I, I just... So you're jealous of Tim yes. is what you're saying. I'm not jealous. Jealousy Maybe, and envy. I don't know. It just, it feels like we're, we're supposed to like sit back and be happy for him. And... I was. And, but it didn't, it just didn't feel like he earned it. Carrie, like, Jared wanted consequences mm. for actions. It felt too easy. You know, it just felt like, you know, he was always going to end up with her. I never... There, you got one or two little moments where you felt like, oh no, he screwed things up, but no, he fixed it. I don't, I just. That's okay. It's a little too puffy and light, and Cotton that's candy my problem with it. I guess my takeaway on this film is it's got a lot of great moments. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of nice little sweet scenes, father or son moments, a, great scenes with the feels, as the kids say. Mm -hmm. um, some great jokes, some funny moments, but I don't think that the moments necessarily add up to a spectacular whole. You feel that the interesting uh, premise of the film, which yes. is this going back in time, 
and changing changing your history yes without consequence is actually maybe a flawed premise i would say that carrie what do you think flawed no <laughs> i'm saying i think i think you could probably tell this this film this story without the time travel element and have a perfectly fine happy film that, that people sense. will enjoy or maybe even for the holidays to have the but i just feel like you inter- you inject the time travel element and it suddenly it feels like it's under underutilized or overutilized but never used correctly or in a way that feels authentic i don't know that's my take like if you're if you're going what you're saying um, let me analyze if you're okay. going to have something like time travel as a major element in uh, the I've, film are you setting up a trap no i'm okay. not setting up a trap i mean i think it's a you're fair not giving your opinion. i think it's Carry a fair, i think it's a fair criticism yeah. but if you're going to have one aspect of it if you're going to have the the entrance point into the into the past you need to show the exit point as well and this is right. not code for some sort of sexy porno what we're saying here is that you have to show the entire you got to show the entire system and you have to show the consequences for it. Well, I felt like the the consequences they did show were easily remedied by just going back and doing it again. Sure. That's all. I mean, it just End of story. it felt like like they weren't really going to go as deeply into it as they probably could have or should have. Okay. I don't know. Well, I'm going to say what I think. Go ahead. I like time travel movies. Yes. I, I think that it uh, was an interesting film. I got sucked into the the saccharine sweetness of it. Mm-hmm. I've always liked uh, Mr. Curtis's films. Um, I agree with what you say. Yep. It, it just doesn't bother me as much as it bothers you. Okay. And I and I did like um, the some of the consequences of of time travel as you go through life. Some of the twists that they showed, or the one specific twist, I thought that that was clever. And maybe maybe the movie needed more of that. I just feel like if you take the time travel out of it, and everything would have ended up the way it ended up anyway. Pretty similarly. I did, oh, he could have been bumbling and stupid and she never would like him. But she did like him. He went out to yeah, dinner. he still screwed it up. He, he, well, he screwed he it up because he, he screwed it up because time. he went back in time he to, to gone, fix the, the playwrights If he wouldn't have gone back in time, then he would have been, he would have been with her. I just, yeah, I just feel like it's it was a, an interesting gimmick and it, and it made for some nice moments, but in the end, I think things would have played out pretty much how they would have. Jared's right. Time travel. No, Jared's One half star. I'm not Big saying thumbs. it's. Oh, a, we haven't. We're not giving Jared it a story. Yet. But I'm not saying yeah. it's a bad film. I'm just saying it's it's flawed. Clearly, uh, what Jared is showing is he hates time travel. It's film. a film. He hates science fiction. Look, it's it's a film of wonderful moments mm-hmm. that may not be a perfect whole, and it's probably a great film to see with a loved one during the holidays. Pop quiz, hot shot. Yes. Did you shed a tear? No. Scary. Although I am I, I am terribly susceptible to tears when it comes to that Ben Fold song that they yeah. started several yeah. times yeah. throughout and then finally started playing at the end, which was deliberate, by the way. <laughs> anyway, well, look at you, it, that song, Mr. Film. That song Animal has Star personal Bear. meaning to me. So yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first song I bang Carrie to. No, it's not. It was on our wedding scene. It was. It's a good song. Anyway, it's a great song. Way to go, Ben Folds. You get a star just for that. <laughs> so uh, let's give this thing a score. And let's talk about it. Jared, you'd give it two stars. No, I'm about two and a half, two and three quarters. I can live with two and three quarters. You guys are absolutely effed in the head. Both of you. I'm sorry. Well, was, I would be, I would probably You be, know what? You take the time, even even with, if you take completely disregard my time travel quibbles with it, it still was just a movie of great moments that, okay. that was sort of. Yeah, like all of them. Side of sort of boring at parts. I, I would not pr- bored. I would probably give it, minutes. give it about three and a quarter stars. So if you we average our stuff you together. Two no, but I'm just agreeing with Jared. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're sort of putting it together. Three, so you were, you would, would give it what? Three and a quarter? I give it three and a quarter. If you give it two and a half, we're sort of in that. Well, well then we should probably go, like, I was about two and a half, three and two and three quarters. So we probably go about three. Around three. Right. And Carrie, you get a you get your vote too, so you get to bump it up. Yeah, right. You guys don't know because you. Won't what are you gonna give it four? What would you give it? Four, it? Yes. four stars. Oh, this this is, is my favorite movie of the year. What? what? You're not editing this out, Jared. No, are this you? is all going in. You are crazy. No, you are crazy. I'm listening to this whole thing, going, "What the hell's wrong with these two? We can't even see you. You're like a ghost. You're, You're like my get, ghost seat talking this is in good, the back. This will be our first review where we actually, other than the one with when you had with Audrey, where we actually show the behind the scenes, the inner workings of how yeah. we deliberate on the score. I'm sorry, Gravity 
blows this out of the water yep. in terms of. I would rather of, see this movie again. Well, wow. that may, that may be the case because it's sort of sentimental and a uh, human side of things. But you know Gravity's what? a better film. I will say I, I enjoyed this film for what it was, but I have no need to ever see it again. Oh my god, I'm gonna buy it. Mm. Are you gonna make Jared watch it? No. In the nude. <laughs> Jared might never get invited over. Wow. I don't hate the film. <laughs> Two and three quarters That's is a, a perfect... perfectly adequate score on a four wow. star how system. Many, wait a minute. How many stars did you give the bling ring? It bling better ring. not be more than this. No, I gave it like two. Uh, I didn't really care for the Bling, bling Ring. ring best movie of the no. year. All right. We should probably say what the final score is. Here's your scope mine score. Mine isn't going to count. I can tell already. <laughs> Thank you for giving me a clean edit point. Here's your scope score. The scope score is three stars. Ooh, <laughs> here we go. Scope scoring. So what is it, Jared? Wow, that was three stars. Three star film. We <laughs> fought for, Carrie fought and lost. This is going to get so many thumbs down. I and off with Carrie. Why? Disaster, she says. <laughs> I, don't, I, just, I love it. For someone who didn't want someone who didn't want to be any have any part of this, you've had a lot to say. Oh my okay. god. I love it. Well, because I can't let you guys sit and talk like that. I look forward to your YouTube comments. I can't wait. So uh, let's wrap this up. So for Carrie and Jared and my giant shiny forehead, I'm Shane. Let's face it, you're and I'm Jared. Out, so I might as well skip my name. I'm not editing anything out. You're in. You're in. Uh, so uh, more Fall Flume Flam coming soon. Thanks for listening. And by the way, Whoa. make sure you comment. Signing off. You comment, Jerry. Yeah. On the YouTube page. Yeah. You send comments at thescopeshow.com. It's all going to be right at the end of the video. Right at the end of the video. So take care of that. So uh, we'll be back another time, another place with more movies. Bye. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves once again at the end. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I know I have. Fear not, Scope Faithful. Days shall pass as if they were but a moment. And Jared, Adam, and Shane will return with another thrilling episode. Until then, send your comments to comments at thescopeshow.com or leave a voicemail message by dialing 612-21-SCOPE. That's 612-217-2673. Thanks for listening, faithful fans. This is Tony Partington saying, Arrivederci. Tune in next time to another terrific edition of The Scope. Scope.